Hello, friends. Today we have another video of ours. This time we will film on the Hanin family estate, Sasha and Dasha Hanin. Sasha is the videographer who was filming with me in the last video. Together we set up a series of videos like these about the experience accumulated on estates that have existed for more than 10 years. There is good experience here, and I am very interested in seeing how their plot has changed. In 2008, my wife and I came to their wedding. I definitely remember planting an apple tree. Perhaps we planted several saplings. Back then it was almost a bare field. What happened after that? What experience have they found over 12 years? Let's see. Sasha, hey! Come on! Hello, friends! This video is about our experiences living and creating our family estate. What have we achieved in 12 years? What were our successes? I would like to share some experiences, some of our mistakes and our good luck. Starting from the moment we came to this land as an abandoned field, not very fertile land, and how it ended up after 12 years. Let's start by briefly describing the layout of our family estate. Here is a plan drawn on plywood, a very successful solution. Our first plans were on paper, redrawing each revision, but paper becomes unusable very quickly. So it was a good solution to start with the success to draw a plan on an ordinary sheet of plywood. We came to the estate from the fact that I met my wife here in the settlement. We wanted to make a wedding ceremony based on the books of Vladimir Nikolaevich Migre. So we created the first plan on paper. Showing the planters with third up and called our guests. Sasha, can you tell me the orientation of your plan? Show the entrance of the site and what's adjacent to get our bearings. I think that your forest over there also borders on the forest, right? That is why seeds sprouted there and your little forest grew, right? You have forest on this side. What direction is that? First, we are now next to the well, and the well is geographically located here, in the center of the site then. In the center of the site, we are arranged diagonally to the cardinal points. Here is south, here is north, east, west. According to the plan, a forest zone should be somewhere here. Here we just had an empty field, five, six, seven years old, something like that. To our south and southeast we have a solid forest. We have a non-standard layout here. At the start, about a third of our site was shady, where sun should have been and where there should have been forest, shade and wind protection, everything was just open. This was especially the case in winter, so that's unusual from the north straight up to the barrel of this pocket. So you enter the estate from the west, right? Yes, that's the main entrance for cars, for the delivery of materials. The road passes by there, yes? Yes, the settlement is rounded, the roads on this side. Here are 
Our boundaries, neighbors are there, and there are neighbors. It would be interesting to know your general layout, where you have, well, you mentioned the forest, maybe you'll say something else about it. You probably already have a forest growing here. We planted it from scratch. Still small, right, it's growing. What about the main areas? Where is the garden, living area, household, or how is it arranged? At the start, we didn't know where we wanted everything to go. We began organizing the wedding, inviting neighbors. We decided to have a wedding mount right here. We knew we'd have a hedge in its exact place and where the forest would go. Our task at first was to arrange the forest edge, to make a garden protected by the forest, and to locate the pond. The first building was a house, not close to the road, by, but secluded and sheltered by trees. Yeah. Same as your version, yes, yes. We were far away, not even 70 meters, but 90 meters for us. Well, many people will want to go deep, yes. In the end, it turned out that closer is better. You are planning another house in the future. Three or four years ago, my wife and I planted out here. We are still perfecting it. The garden ended up over here. In the end, it's forest. Not half of the estate, but our forest seems to be like a thicker strip. Here it expands, and it goes almost to the east. Here, continuing the forest, we have fruit trees, as you can see on the plan. That is, we kind of, there is even an estate called Les Assad, forest garden. At first our plan had both trees and garden, everything mixed up together. But in the end, of course, what's needed appears. Sometimes they get in the way of each other. Yes, sometimes they interfere with each other. It's all a living project and we need more. Well, you've gained experience, but look here. I remember my wife and I were at your wedding. I think I planted an apple tree somewhere around here. Are there orchard trees in different parts of your plot now? Even in the forest here and even deeper? When the forest grows up, we'll probably thin them out a bit. Yes, this is a completely normal process of life. What do you have here? Garden? Are there vegetables grown somewhere? Yes, here we have one of the big greenhouses. Here is the very first small greenhouse. The center of our plot has some landscaping, flower beds, and in the very middle there is a vegetable garden, nice and wide. The borders aren't shown here, but they are wide because everything from the garden spreads. Our forest protects all of this, probably even the center of the vegetable garden. The house is here to start with, later it will be in the north, so we can sum and live easily. We saw the whole vegetable garden and this whole crater part, framed by the forest. That was the plan. So, what about the pond? You have a pond, right? Where? We take a pond at the very southeastern border, whereas where there is a tall forest. We didn't dare to do it in the center, although we wanted to. We had plans, but decided not to risk it, make it closer to the forest, so there was definitely water. So, we have it here on the south side. Do you have a slope on your side? In principle, for a pond, of course, the slope is important to collect water from the mountain snow. When my wife and I were planning to live here, I came and watched the water all spring and autumn. It turned out that the lowest place was right here. It seems you could make a pond here. Well, it's logical, yes, if the water flows there. 
and that's how it turned out. This is where melt water comes in, right? Yes, this is the lowest place. When the pond overflows, we had to make a ditch for the water. It turned out to be important to have a slope towards the pond from all sides. And when it overflows, to have what we see here. Wait a second. I already understood before doing the pond. Thank God, we were not the first, we saw how it's done. And that you really can set aside some of the fertile layer and save it. Here at the edges where there was a beach going down to the, to the water, we created a heap of fertile soil. It's still there, we are gradually using it very comfortably, since it's at the edge and we have a large forest there, it turns out that a pile of earth from the pond successfully blocks the view from the forest so people can see us swimming. All I'd say is that these hips could be arranged better. We did not have the chance, we had an excavator faster, faster, throwing dirt around, when we decided to build the bathhouse here, almost by hand, of course, I asked the excavator, the excavator to throw some there. I leveled everything almost by hand. There was a lot of landscaping work. Literally, for two, three years I was landscaping. When building a pond, it is better to already have a general layout of the whole site. So that these heaps, somehow we could have blocked the forest more evenly if I'd put it, without this section sticking out, rather scattered it along the line of the forest. Everyone has such experience and mistakes. On the other hand, the pond finished quickly and worked well. We'll show you what this hill looks like. It's planted with fruit trees on all sides. Here is a very beautiful pine tree, which we planted at the very beginning, it's already so big. We can also say that the very first thing we do on the estate, the entire layout is often built around this. Here, for example, we planned the first house, began to build here. And in some way, these meadows, gardens, flower beds formed around it. The pond appeared and the whole landscaped area radiates from it. It is important from the start to have a somewhat harmonious plan even before coming to the land. Use people's experience who have lived more than 12 years on a large estate plot. If I understood you correctly, you are saying similar to what I said in my video, that it is necessary to define and understand where the main elements of the estate will be located. The main elements are a pond, a forest, a hedge, I don't know, a house, a vegetable garden, right? Vegetable garden, yes. Maybe I listed the rest uh, you can plan from the start. Here we see the pond is a significant component of the forest zone. Better to understand this. Where these parts are located, plan it correctly, then the rest falls into place. Yes, you need to have a basic layout. Get clear that the big trees have to be in the north. At the beginning it is not clear when the trees are small, you come and it seems, well, okay. It's just that if you make this first mistake, for example, you establish a garden there, the basically out where the forest is, the basically out where the forest is. Clearly it is best to put it in the north. You can't put the vegetable garden there, it goes either in the center or to the south or win-win from the center to the south. Anyway, there is always some competition for light, so to speak, on the estate. Because everything is grown very quickly, sometimes you need to transplant or thin, even if it was planted with love. Our layout at the beginning was not clear. It was superficial, just rough. 
Here is in our opinion first we made one vegetable garden, then a second, then a third. But we it's too cold, and with three gardens it is difficult to keep them in hand. It is better to concentrate on the first vegetable garden, make it permanent so it has its own spot. Not moving around and make this place really good. We had a similar story to ours. I also tried gardening in several places, but I spent a lot of energy basically just idling. You need to know from the start where the garden will be, not to have to move it later on. Well, yes, the vegetable garden is one of these elements I mentioned. A pond, a vegetable garden. It makes the pond easier. We have big trees here, but in the midday sun is in summer, there is not a shadow on it. It's okay. In fall and spring, of course, it is covered by a shadow. Well, yes, yes, clear. But my wife and I did not notice that this is to be a problem. I would probably say, from my own experience, that a pond can go anywhere. So if you have low land in the center, better to dig in the low land. It makes no sense to fight against nature, pump water up uh, a mountain. Better to do it in the lowlands. Our version took three years, despite the fact that it is in the lowlands. It took us three years to somehow fill this 30 square meter mirror. It is still better to do it in the lowlands. That's my advice. We saw some negative experiences. If on a raised area, there simply will not be water. A little at the bottom, and that's it. Maximum. People are very worried about it, so it is very important. Well, slope, yes, this is the most important thing. Yes, as I say all the time, wherever the milk water goes. I am interested in your opinion. For example, I would not make a pond in the depths of the forest because then a lot of leaves will fall there, such as the limitation. Still, under all other conditions, I would really look at the direction of the slope and where we can collect melt water, and then in theory everything will be fine with the pond. I agree, yes. Well, here is an example. My great-grandfather, he had 50 acres. He has a pond in the forest. That is, it is like an amateur, but I liked it there. There was such a good environment, so it is how you wrench it. For example, even with the slope to the north, if someone still wants a forest there, well, so so we he will have to make a pond there. Well, I have such a situation, but I thought to do it at the edge of the forest, not deep into the forest, but I don't know. The price of a mistake can be big. You dug a pond and then you can't redo it there in the forest. Yes, with a complicated layout you'll have serious work terracing to direct the water where it is necessary. It's some kind of gymnastics. Regarding the construction site, I am interested what technology you used for your first house. Are you satisfied with it? Would you make the same house now or not? And looking ahead, what are you planning for the second home? Or maybe there is something else you want to tell us about your experience in construction. I think we should move a little bit then. So this part is in the background. Uh, the plan is enough. Come on. Here are some place in this young forest area we put a tent and began to build our very first building. This is a producti productive zone. Storage for shovels, rakes, wheelbarrows, generators. There was no electricity. If we drove off somewhere, it could be locked up securely. Of course, and to keep it out of the rain. Here it is important to know that we used light timber frame technology. From my experience, sometimes I use it, sometimes not. So, what's the frame here? Do you have insulation? There is no insulation, it's just an outbuilding. It has one layer of covering attached to the frame. Our first house was the same 
light frame, but it was insulated for winter. It has served us faithfully for 12 years. Everything been fine. So according to the plan, my wife and I have some... Well, maybe we didn't need to make a triangular sloping roof. Vertical walls are more convenient for putting storage cabinets. But it's nothing. Here is the first thing. It is important to say that a light timber frame, in my experience, is not very suitable as a major capital work. Look at the technology used to build a light frame house. If you need to build something up quickly at the beginning, you can probably use a light frame there. But if possible, if finances allow, it is better to start, well, this is my personal experience, for example, to construct a house made of logs or bricks, something that mice will definitely not chew up. A foundation is desirable, constructing with pillar, pillar it needs to be said, it is very quickly dilapidated in construction, it begins to bend the stump's rod, the poles are also very unreliable. For some kind of productive, productive building, a light frame seems ideal to me. And if you need something to start living in, all the same, I would go for a house with a more serious technology. And if it is, for example, light a door, we have such buildings here. They soak the straw, mix it, and or straw construction, for example, is also quite popular among us. Uh, how do you feel about such technologies? It's also a light timber frame, right? Is that right? Well, yes, I can't say anything about the straw building. I guess it's a very complex technology. Well, difficult to do high quality, it seems to me, right? Yes, but from experience, a log house lock on lock, even if I hired a completely inexperienced team, it's still a more reliable structure, in the sense that it can be repaired. Over here, what is our difficulty? Wrong technology, so our inner frame breaks down, moisture gets trapped there, mice appear. Well, if you missed some critical things at the start, then the frame breaks down very quickly. The only thing I can say in favor of the light timber frame is that you can quickly and easily and extensions and complete it. This is a plus. Maybe it will work for the beginning. By the way, we had similar problems to what you described. Our first house was also a light timber frame, I didn't talk about it, but it's important to note, from what I understand now, that there are peculiarities to this framing style. It is necessary to waterproof the structure from the inside, so that moisture can get into the walls. On the outside, there should be permeable membrane that allows everything to pass through, otherwise everything erodes. If you suddenly seal the outside, then moisture will collect inside the walls, and it will be scary. So the timber frame is a technology that must be competently applied. In my opinion, we have literate people in our settlements. I know houses like this. Maybe yes, and the nature of my work as a builder, we come across unsuccessful ones all the time. <laughs> well, probably most of them are, we have no experience, we have to redo it, yes. Yes, so keep in mind that the frame must be built in a certain way. Yes, if you choose a timber frame, then do it right, you need to know it. We did the opposite, we have a multi-layer walls with a vapor barrier on the outside, so vapor and steam have no way to escape. Whatever we boil, steam, fry, everything accumulates in the insulation, is absorbed into the wood and it all slowly rots. That's why I don't think light timber frame is the best technology. I mean if we just analyze it, for example, renovations, if something needs to be removed or rebuilt when examining the extraction, it turns out that there is a huge amount of plastic film, foam and insulation. What to do with it? It is a definite problem for the future. I thought about this too. 
If we started with the log house, for example, now I'm dreaming, or rather I suppose, uh, if at the very beginning all the same we choose the log house, maybe smaller structure, it would have been better. Make extensions to it, and even if it had to be removed or something rebuilt, it is firewood. It is firewood for several years, yes. It's good that we now have the opportunity to hand, to hand over some of the plastic for recycling, but if you think about it, a frame house has a huge pile of plastic remains. Yes, yes. Our next construction was a bath house. Probably we should go there. Come on. Our second construction was next to the pond, a bath house. It was necessary because our first child was about to be born. We felt the, the child needs to be washed somewhere and so on, so we urgently began to prepare a bath house. I realized what was needed and I had also become interested in this log house technology. So I decided to overhaul things immediately. After constructing on stumps, I wanted a better foundation, serious walls, everything. It was almost a complete renovation, so we already replaced the light structure with a more serious one. Now I would like to leave more in the house built like this. Do we have a concrete strip footing here? A strip, yes. Small, but a strip has been very well behaved. Naturally, nothing is moving anywhere, the structure is not leaning, nothing. The bath house is more precise and the house, of course, is dancing. Yeah, well, the strip footing is generally not bad, yes. Well, to be honest, for Romans, any building in general will do for a start. You can just put it together using timber slabs. If it's only a young family, it does not matter at all where you start. Only now, when the children appear, of course, it's more serious. Yes, yes. The, about the technology of building a house. Well, you said it. I remember that it was you who did the Canadian cabin. Here is the Canadian one, right? Judging by this here, tell me, maybe... Very cool Canadian technology. What is its essence? The fact that a notch is made here. Without the notch, you have a semi-circle, a semi-circle bowl. When the lower log dries, its radius decreases, but the upper cup, made with this geometry, remains. So, there is a drawback. Small holes or cracks appear between the logs. This naturally happens over the years. That's the disadvantage. They are not too noticeable, but with this nice Canadian technology, 10 years have passed, but these places are still dense, fitted together. You didn't need caulking? I didn't caulk. That is how did you build up the frame, curved them down and that's it, right? Yes, this is the Canadian style, almost 10 years. But here you can't insert a knife here. This is the advantage. The tumbler squeezes all the time, like a cup. If constructing a log house, I would also pass on the experience. It is desirable and good, of course, when the sun heats, but it is still better to make a large roof, to kind of close. Large overhangs. I painted this at the beginning and it's clear that with the rain and uh, only small overhang, if the roof was short, it would be even worse, so a log house should have a good roof and not skimp on paint. Good paint is desirable. Still, this tatty technology was, has very much justified itself. For example, at the beginning, when we started to bath here, I was worried that a little wind was blowing through the cracks, but it was only because the squeezing hand had not started. I followed the tips saying the log house must be heavy, must have a massive roof. People used to fill earth or the ceiling and this was correct. A massive ceiling climbs up rows. 
which usually have not pressed, and these balls of logs, even ordinary balls, enter each other and everything becomes tight. By the way, I tried it in the bathhouse and in the workshop, I have a bag filled with earth, well, really good, but in the big house I did not take this risk. I don't know, the air is large and it is high, two floors to drag their this soil. Well, they're probably light it up, will see it better. Well, yes, you can, of course, uh, there is just a mineral wool, uh, 20 centimeters there, and so I agree, yes, if only to fill up with earth, it turns out cheap as well. Based on experience, we can also say that when disassembling this bath, when required, there will be basically only firewood and birds. When analyzing the first house, and this is not far, of us, uh, in five years it will have be to, to be removed and rebuilt, or we will try to move to a new house, that is, there will be a huge amount of garbage that will have to be disposed of somewhere, recycle, do something, well, this is such an experience, if you are very careful about nature, then think about it. It is, it is better to start with a more environmentally friendly one, probably, then. Well, who is interested in the idea of family state? In my opinion, everyone understands. We are all for the respect for nature. Me too, frankly, for my first house. I already thought a lot what to do with all this. I have to, and we will also have to after a while. But I hope it can stay with a little longer, because now after the construction of the first house, I had heaps of garbage, all sorts of trimming, I sorted them out for two, three years. I was taking something to the city, something that can be burned. Well, these are such unnecessary worries. We must get away from it, of course. Yes, I agree. As for the construction, the following buildings have already done only from logs. We already started a goat's house there and planted the house only from logs. Because we, we realized that ecology is important, and yet it is our age-old tradition. We decided to support it. <laughs> well, Russia is really big, and there are a lot of bricks houses in the Vladimir region as well. A little to the south there are a lot of adobe houses, my I suppose is from Mordovia, where you pass some kind of border and the dub buildings are around. Yes, that is, if we are in the north of Russia, then for example we must be careful with the dub. Yes, adobe is not widespread here, log cabins are more suitable. A log house is somehow illogical to build in the south. Because of lack of forest, yes, there is such a thing. Also, frame construction is normal for outbuildings. We have a frame workshop without foundation. But is it insulated or not? Insulated, yes. It is without a foundation. In my opinion, construction without a foundation generally is wrong. Well, I would now postpone construction, but would put it better on the foundation. Because many of my buildings are on stumps or on poles. The whole construction is good, but it has a floor foundation, that is, the floor will soon rot or become curved. This rot will begin to rise up on walls. This is very upsetting me. Yes, I have similar thoughts too. Later you begin to understand what should have been done according to common sense. But could you be so wise at the very beginning? Now looking back, the first mistakes are very frustrating, but they cannot be avoided, of course. Well, yes, this is the normal course, course of life, so good. It's like a football field here. If you can twist the camera a little, it's very cool to have a sports ground on the estate. And I draw your attention to the sports ground, because you can combine some zones here. That is, for example, a woodshed, a bathhouse, a workshop requires a place for the delivery of firewood, materials, boards. That is, you need a large space where a truck, maybe two, will drop in, turn around, unload. And on the one hand, you don't want to waste place for this in the project. But on the other hand, you can make it multi-purpose. That is, some kind of 
sports place for football, badminton, volleyball. And here's the entry, it turns out, right? Yes, we drive in from there. Well, you are so far from the road. Well, yes, this is due to the fact that the first desire was to go somewhere into the distance. And now, by the way, what do you do it differently? Yes, now we do differently. That is, our first desire was to hide away so that no one could see us. We are from for ourselves, doing what we want. Well, that was great. We are on our, on our own, in our thoughts. We are creating an estate, that's cool. Less communication for us, it was great. And now we understand concerning the layout for convenience in the future, it is very important to take into account all the points, the delivery of materials, firewood, how convenient it is for you to come to the house. On the first video, you can reconsider it again, watch this experience of Anatoly. We step on the same rake, everybody steps on them, I think. For many it will, be, it will probably be so. Well, I hope you get the idea of array combination. That is, these are the moments you need to place for a reversal and we use it for something else. Yes, this is multi-purpose. Yes, it's cool. And taking into account the fact that not all, for example, have two free hectares, but basically all the same one and a half or even less. Well, yes, but in many settlements, by the way, it is strictly a hectare per person. But this is also good, because if you have a small plot, you think more about the public. And this is a very important aspect. And here is another short question. Your land is so flat here. Did you level it off on purpose or was it originally flat? Because apparently after plowing, I have some kind of furrows on my plot. There is a bath here, according to a plan. We decided to put a bath here and I had to move a heap of soil with an excavator. There were pits like these half a meter deep and heaps like these half a meter up. I cut topsoil all down to the level of the workshop and later ordered an excavator to take it all to the forest. That is, the surface here was simply like gullies, with a shovel, with a rake, with a wheelbarrow, a year, two... Titanic work, of course. Everything becomes even. And once more, good advice. If you have a walk behind tractor with a mining cutter and you need to level the side, for example, make a football place, you mow grass as smoothly as possible, take a walk behind tractor with a cutter and cut off all the bumps. I just cut them off and fell into the holes. This is a quick alignment, instantaneous. Some of our earlier places of vegetable gardening, they are overgrown and many of them disappeared. Clutched with weeds, there is something growing in the trees, but this is the main vegetable garden because it is in the center. And according to our plan, it was located somewhere in the center. A greenhouse was quickly constructed. I will say separately about the greenhouse in more detail. And the vegetable garden is not included in the forest zone, is it? Is it at the edge of the forest in prospect according to the plan? Yes, that is, this is the idea. The sun is coming and it shines through everywhere from the garden. But do you already consider this place good for a vegetable garden? Yes, I like the center and we continue to expand it. This is an important shoot issue. It doesn't make sense to make a vegetable garden small in many places. Weeds constantly clog him. It must be fenced. If you have goats, you need to protect it from them. Still, if it is centralized, it is easier to keep track of the goats. And if there are two or three of them, then you may not keep track of something. Water. Either to throw houses around the entire site or to run with the water and can is also so-so. And it turns out in the center of a large vegetable garden, 
much more efficient, convenient. And for example, you've got pit or hay that is you roll a bale of hay straight into the center of the vegetable garden in autumn, for example. Close to everything or in the spring you plant, plant potatoes under hay, immediately you do it all. In large quantities or in small quantities you move everything in the center. That is, it is very convenient, eh? everything is very close. And it is also important to have an entrance to the garden. Again, to bring in fertilizers, for example, and take a harvest out, maybe for the future. That is, for example, to transport on a trailer to the seller if needed. Concerning the vegetable garden, I can also say that if you constantly live on the estate, you could keep animals. And for the garden, it is very good. Here is my beloved. I hesitated a lot and did not want to. She got the first goat. That is, we did not revile with her, of course, but argued. I said, you have to build something for her, so that uh, she can live somewhere. No, let's put her in the woodshed and start soon. In general, we did it. We got a goat, began to learn how to take care of it and realize that goats give just away some fertilizer. The herd has grown, now we have seven, eight goats, in my opinion, with young animals. In the spring it is huge amount, it is proportional to, for example, a truck of manure. That is, we have our own truck of fertilizer every year. Well, that is good, this is a very big plus. Well, of course, it is not whole manure, it is mixed with hay. They eat grass from the estate in winter and we additionally buy, of course, there is not enough grass on the estate, as it turned out. If you have a large farm, you need to have grazing. There are two options, either a large estate or a grazing should be provided in a settlement. It is very important. Otherwise, it will be very difficult to keep animals. I came to the same idea that in the settlements it would be great to provide grazing for the future. What are they doing at the stage playing in a settlement? They take a plot of land, make some roads so, so that it is convenient to drive up. It's good if a public area was foreseen, and then in some places even this is not, that is a public lot. But in reality, this is not enough. Several plots for grazing must also be added on the plan. Or it should be the edge of the settlement, and preferably in several places so that from different parts of the settlement an opportunity appears for many people to keep their animals. This is very important, because then an opportunity appears for many people to keep their animals. And for example, to engage in cooperation, some kind of daily production, seriously engage in cheese making or something else, to deal with fertilizers, well, by the way, I thought that I would provide a field for a settlement, or maybe even several smaller ones, where it would be possible to grow cereals jointly. In such a cooperative form, there may be some other crop production, to make some kind of public garden, for example, and for grazing separately, or some area for hay making, or grazing, or both. And what I am also thinking about, for example, our settlements are dense, that is, either they are close or at a distance of less than one, two, three hundred meters. Well, very close to each other. It would be nice if there were kilometer zones. On the one hand, it would be good to have large pastures, but the disadvantage of long distance distances is that it would be more difficult for children to get to friends. Well, there must be some way around the outskirts of the villages. If this is a group of villages, then around the outskirts, well, there must be some pastures.
So the people have places to take their cows, goats. Well, here's an idea. I was on a settlement uh, circle in Kavchek, and there were girls from the settlement, if I remember, from Mariel region or something. And they have such an interesting layout, hexagonal, hexagonal sections like honeycombs, and some sections are empty. This is specifically provided them for grazing. Well, we may do it differently. For example, there could be one plot for six for grazing and for hay or something else that is with better provide such areas as public territory. Well, you definitely need to think about it. Well, yes, this must be taken into account. But my question is this, uh, I just know that many people in our settlements have tried to breed goats, but not everyone succeeded. You talk about it so positively, but one of my neighbors dire directly says that goats are evil. They try to keep them. Of course, he jokes in his own way, but just the idea is that you turn it away and your goat is already gnawing some apple tree or something else. How do you handle with them? Are, are there any difficulties? There is. Manure is great. Indeed, manure is really necessary for your garden, but eight goats are a lot of worries. Goats need a very good warm room, preferably spacious, so, so that it is well ventilated. They don't like cold? Well, if it is cold, then the young are bad. In the spring, young growth appears, and if the air gets straight through, it is not very good. Well, by nature it is possible, but not desirable. Plus. In winter you come to give hay, talk to a goat, milk it, it is much more pleasant in the warmth. And when you keep goats, here we, for example, are already laying small areas, such fenced meadows. We plan to have five of them for grazing, that is several places. For example, we don't want to put a peg and tie a goat on a string, but it is easier to put them in a paddock and they graze there for themselves. That is, the organization of grazing is necessary, and if you don't do it, then one of the difficulties is that you just take a goat, that you just take a goat and put it on a stake, and this day after day, day after day, you put it in on in the morning, took it in the evening, and milk every day, well, these are pluses. And uh, these places where you graze, you still drive them into the house in the summer. Or are they like that in the summer and stay here in the place? No, we'll lead them to a barn at night. Firstly, goats are very sociable animals. If we leave them alone in the dark, they cry loudly. That is, they will not let you to forget about them. <laughs> but in the end, everything turns out well for you, and you are happy, right? Yes, well, based on our experience where we went wrong, we were mistaken at the very beginning, and it was necessary first build a goat's roof, and then get a goat. It would have been easier because our fire shed got busy, and we had to build a fire shed. That is, some kind of difficulty has occurred. That is, we urgently had to put firewood somewhere, and the goats are now there. Well, on the other hand, you tried. What if it would not suit you, but you have built a goat's house already? Of course, it can be useful anyway, but yes, that is, trying with small efforts is also a good idea, in my opinion. Well, you need to start with exactly one goat. Live a year or two. Now Dash will tell you something. Talking about goats is more logical with me, of course, because I am doing this. Well, first of all, it is not difficult for me since I'm used to it since childhood. My sister was allergic uh, to cow dairy products. Therefore, my uh, my mom, I, I have been working with goats since uh, 10 years old. Accordingly, it is not as difficult for me as it is for Sasha, a former city dweller. Tense, I don't know, difficult, I don't know, and this is... Secondly, the goat's roof should be done next to the garden, because cleaning and dragging far away is also a difficult moment. Thirdly, children organizing their communication with animals, accustoming them to work, they are already milking, 
their milk, some kind of responsibility in them. For me, let's say, it's not difficult. Also, I hope for children it will not be so much stress in the future life of an adult. That is, it can be summed up so that the goals, they structure you more, to rationally equip everything. They help you organize your vegetable garden. They help to accustom children to work and responsibility. That is, there are a lot of advantages. But they force you to build a certain daily routine and a certain responsibility. That is, you cannot move away suddenly. You must make an appointment, create conditions, so that while you are absent, someone will look after them. It is a responsibility. There are frames, but there are a huge number of advantages. Dash is a good girl. She took it, started it, uh, I was totally against it first. Quietly I got it, got it, and now I support her in this regard. We've got seven, eight goals. But do you get a lot of dairy products, or how many goats do you milk? Do you use it all yourself, or do you sell something? We have a big family. Our family, my parents, Dasha's parents, that is, there is not very much surplus of milk. We have our own cottage cheese, we drink milk ourselves, two parents, they do not have goats. We supply them for sordo and for cottage cheese. That is, the milk comes quickly. Well, yes, it turns out that you have three families living here. And in the summer our neighbors come, so they buy also with great pleasure. Every day, about a liter. Some neighbors take it, others, that is, there is still a small income. The goats earn themselves, seems to me, even on the grass, right? They earn for eight rolls of hay for themselves over the summer. Well done. That is, if you live on an estate, then you have to think about animals keeping. They structure you and help you organize your garden and space. That is, if you planted something in the wrong place, they will immediately prompt you. It is not on the right place. Yes, and you will already begin to structure your space. So prob probably you need to fence the apple tree, or better tie a goat or something else. It helps. About gardening more. I experimented a lot with the vegetable garden. I realized that a very cool thing is clay. If you add a few wheelbarrows of clay to a sea buckthorn, it transforms a lot. It begins to give a lot of shoots and the berries start practically from the roots. If it is not very fecund, now it fecunds and naturally the lower branches dry up, well, how do you do it? Are you strewing about the trunk circle or straight to the trunk? Well, you can touch the basal neck, probably. They are not afraid of this, but it is better, of course, not to close basal neck. It is better to do it nearby. Or uh, if you plan a garden of them or some kind of composition, it is better, for example, to create a bunch of clay and plant several good varietal bushes around the perimeter. It is better, by the way, plant good varieties at start, large, and they will just start to grow quickly. And so, clay, elsewhere I noticed, here you plant some kind there, for example, cedars, oaks, walnuts, walnuts in general, they are very capricious. It can be hard for them, something else, if there are piles of clay nearby, many trees, they seem to be rooted there. You can clearly see that is if I start trimming the ground, I see how they directly launch the roots into this clay. Here, next to the hips, from the pond, piers. Piers are very strong next to them. They put their roots right there under the clay and they just feel good. The apple tree feels good there. I paid attention to this, and now I have an experiment. We have already realized that the garden will be large, and most likely we will enclose it with a fence, since we have pets, and this fence will be partially framed with clay. 
What is more good, that clay allows sediments to linger in the garden. That is, when you water right here, water pours out onto the grass and leaves, comparing to a clay layer which retains moisture better. The only thing is, if the garden is in the lowland, this is one thing. If it is at the top, then this clay decoration is very cool. That is, it allows to retain additional moisture and it is very cool. Will help for good harvests. Interesting experience, very interesting. I have not thought of it. I will show you separately on the video. This year, in the middle of summer, I just made a clay crater and loaded a lot of harm there in the fall. And in the spring I forgot about it, but in the middle of summer tomatoes grew there. We, of course, did not plant them, but a soft seeding pumpkin grew there. Zucchini of this size, that is, I literally put so much there, but it grew to incredible sizes. How can this be explained? Well, it seems to me that clay helps. And now my experiment was successful enough that I decided to move it to the garden as well. Достаточно удачно, что я решил это переместить еще и на огород. Composition tomatoes and grapes. We have tried cucumbers and many other vegetables here. In principle, everything grows. You just need to alternate. But you probably won't be able to alternate grapes. It is permanent, yes. Do you get grapes in the center, mostly? Here I also see grapes. No, we will soon transfer this to wine yard. There are already grapes here. There are grapes from the tent. Do you have only one big greenhouse? Unfortunately, yes. There will be another one. My wife already wants a lot of greenhouses. I wouldn't mind either. In general, le large greenhouses. There are, these are greenhouses 6 by 12 meters. I watched this experience from my parents, which in general started with the fact that they began to grow grapes in a greenhouse, which is uh, 4 by 8 meters. The ceiling was high enough. I, I watched how it all grows. I really liked it. And I realized that large greenhouses are a worthwhile topic. Now I will tell you what the trick is, what the interest is. First of all, is a higher ceiling. Good? It's good that what grows uh, here is not overheated. And you must definitely have ventilation holes at the top. I'll show you later. That is, it is created here by itself. Large volume of polycarbonate condenses heat. Even with constantly open breeze, it is hot here. Are they always opened? Constantly, even in freezing conditions. And frost does not touch plants here. I don't know how it happens. Well, by the way, your parents told me that apparently it turns out due to the fact that the large volume of the greenhouse, the earth is warming up here and at night this is enough to keep warm, because the earth has a large heat capacity and perhaps it saves. We also close the doors, but the briefs always remain open, nevertheless, thanks to the earth, yes. Well, yes, it's just that uh, there is not much land in a small narrow greenhouse and does not work very well, but in a large one it works. In this greenhouse we also used clay. Here, here, the entire fertile topsoil in the past uh, was taken out. It is uh, distributed over the beds and clay is poured into the most passage part to a depth of uh, two, three bionites of a shovel. You can see in the spring how it works. The clay is soaked in winter, it becomes a little liquid, but you can add set sand. After two years of adding sand, the surface becomes normal and you can walk. But it concerns the spring, when there is a lot of water, clay absorbs water, 
and holds it for about a month. That is when the area around has already dried up till the end of May, the beginning of June. There is still wet clay in the greenhouse. It feeds all plants, that is, water and is not needed in spring, early summer. That is, clay helps a lot of to retain this moisture. Plus, it prevents excess weed from growing, as you can see. Well, yes, the weeds don't really grow in clay. About the high ceiling of the greenhouse, we said that warming becomes more uniform and no overcooking. Because when an ordinary, typical greenhouse with such a low ceiling, tomatoes are rising and everything at top is already overcooked. If there is no automatic ventilation system, if it has not opened in the morning, then the problems begin already, wilting of plants and so on from the heat. And in a big greenhouse, you can turn around, you can plant grapes, you can make a tomato plantation, somehow rebuild something. For example, if you do some kind of centralized watering in a greenhouse, then for a small one it is not so reasonable. That is, if you are already breathing water, then you are leading to a large greenhouse. That is, it's cool, it's convenient. Several water, container, several water containers can be placed here. This also helps create a climate and watering comfort. And you can add that it is not watered here at all. At all. Basically, I do not water the greenhouses, nor this one. It's because tomatoes are all the same, right? Well, in general, I don't water the garden either. What revelations. No, well, honestly, there is no point in watering the greenhouse. Well, besides, it may not be necessary to talk about it. Well, yes, that is, uh, the greenhouse in principle requires minimum wa minimal watering. When constructing clay passages, all the water, I don't know how, either through the capillaries or it seems like it should uh, hold it back, but for some reason it helps us keep moisture in the ground. Pulls it in, maybe pulls in. Pulls in. Interesting that is clay like here it is understandable but it is in the garden and in the greenhouse and in construction the stuffs are all on clay that is this is the most important material probably and about the construction of the greenhouse we can also say that no metal is needed you can make everything of wood that is the racks are made the upper and lower crossbars and uh, it used to be the structure is like this, a roof triangle, is knocked together separately and just thrown up. It's spinned from below to the frame and polycarbonate is arranged, is arranged on top. That is, everything can be done by one owner. Did you sell the bars yourself or uh, did you buy this already? I, I do not even know what size it is. This is 7 by 5 centimeters, this is from a regular floorboard, 15 by 5, just in half, well, you saw it in general, saw it yourself. This is an inch, 15 too. Also sewn in half, so that there is less shadow. At the top, there are thinner, thinner slats on the cray. Is the polycarbonate removable or not? No, this can be taken as a minus, because I made it all just hard and indestructible. My parents made more correct with their second and third greenhouses. The segments uh, can be taken out and in winter the snow flies in here. And the snow and the snow for the greenhouse is very important. So that the land in the greenhouse is closed, we have problems with that. Since the unattended ceiling, it is necessary to bring show through the doors in winter, on uh, wheelbarrows or in saucepans and buckets. And another question is about wooden bars at the bottom of the greenhouse. Uh, are not you worried that it would uh, quickly decay there, it lies on the ground? The greenhouse is seven years old, the frame was only burnt at the bottom, and it lies in a clay, so to speak, enveloped, and the clay is from below and from the sides, even from the side of the beds. If you dig in, everything is all right with bars. It is simply burnt, the presence of clay does not allow to rot quickly. 
Even that smaller greenhouse, our first, is more than 10 years old. It is also made in clay. There is a thinner board. It is also still intact. That is, in general, you cannot bother with some kind of foundation. The fact is that this polycarbonate has a maximum lifetime of 15 years. This is such a maximum that it seems unattainable. We changed polycarbonate in the greenhouse already, and as I remember, it served for six years. Well, that polycarbonate has been serving for 10, 11 years, right? Well, by the way, it seems that polycarbonate can be different. Polycarbonate is very different. One spells quickly and the other, well, we took the best premium class. Well, of course, it, it's expensive. The difference is two or more times. This is expensive one as well. That is, it turns out that if you take a cheap one, we, for example, took a cheap one for the shower, and it decayed literally the next year, just crumbled in the sun. To choose cheap or something in between doesn't make sense either, because there is no pleasure to, to change all this in five years. If you take it, then we need good polycarbonate. And then about 15 years probably it will serve. It must, of course, be washed in the greenhouse, take care of it in winter in order to prevent snow accumulating, because in our greenhouse polycarbonate cannot be removed. I have a stick with a scraper, I throw it on the roof and clean off every thaw so that all this does not fail. It seems that the structure is not very rigid. But the greenhouse can withstand half a meter of wet snow. Well, you have this, I forgot how are they called. This is like a roof truss on purpose, they can support a huge load. So it is clear. And in the large greenhouse, there are supporting props in the center. That is, the center wrecks half the entire mess. Well, yes. Well, I am still interested in one more issue. I heard from your parents that you took this size in the greenhouse in order to use polycarbonate as efficiently as possible, which we usually have, uh, there are 2 meters by 12 or cut in half by 6. Tell me about it. How, do you, how did you manage to use polycarbonate economically? Very, yes, we need to count it thoroughly. To use 6 by 12 with a small skate is very economical. Here it took 6 sheets of uh, 12 meters for this greenhouse. 6 12 meters sheets. A greenhouse uh, 4 by 8 meters needs 4 sheets. And in squares the difference is just 2 times. That is, you add 2 sheets and you have twice as many squares, that is, the difference is very convincing. But as I see, the height is exactly to the width of the polycarbonate sheet, and you let it go straight along the perimeter. And the roof is too, probably you made for the width of the sheet, uh, 2.1 meters. That is, there is a little overlap. And here, how long did you do them? Two sheets are enough? It turns out that there is a 3 meter sheet, and why I say a small skate, because a 3 meter sheet <coughs> would suit only horizontally, and you did it in the middle. And when I lift a little to do a small skate, uh, that is, it diverges uh, a little in the middle, and I made it with an iron skate. That is, it helped to save polycarbonate, because we could use 3 meter sheets. The grapes grow well, but the only thing is that this year we cut it too little. Somehow we regretted it. They left some whips and it became overgrown. Judging, judging from experience of your parents, this should not be done. Yes, you have to do it hard, leave one or two lashes maximum from the root. But what happens if you leave three, four, everything is all overgrown? Because of this, he lacks the sun, well, there are grapes, but since we still partially grow tomatoes here, 
They are not enough. No grapes, no tomatoes. In general, such a bad experience this year. But so the greenhouse will be completely under the grapes. As Dasha said, completely under the grapes. And in order for us to have cucumbers, tomatoes, we will also have to build a similar one. Basically, it does not matter. You can also make metal. If you seriously do this, of course, you need metal. And it is better to do the foundation. But since polycarbonate needs to be replaced, I thought that 15 years is enough for me. Then I will probably do something more serious. But in principle, if you take the maximum, I think the frame will be enough for 20 years. Only enough for some reason it still works. Yes, of course that's enough. If you have it for 7-8 years, if you look, the greenhouse is 7 years old. Here it stands in the clay. And there is a timber, 15 to 10 centimeters. Here you can see the bottom of this bar. Everything is whole here. It has been standing in clay for 7 years and it does not crumble anywhere. That is, it feels great. I think it will stand 20 years. Polycarbonate is more likely to fail than a wooden greenhouse. Honestly, I will not be surprised if this greenhouse will serve for you for 30 years. I will not be surprised. From what I see, if it's almost 10, the most basic problem is the foundation. Maybe I'll just put this frame on blocks or something else. You don't even need to disassemble it. I also think that it will be possible to replace what is needed. For example, to pour concrete or use a brick. And this can be solved. And in principle you can quickly replace the base. And only the base in principle is subject uh, to rotting for some reason, etc. And once again, it turns out you even leave these air holes for the winter. Do you just not close them at all? At all. I made grooves uh, there in order to make closed doors. But I never made them because when the spring, more precisely at the beginning of summer, low temperatures came, we realized that it does not freeze. There is warm in it. It goes down to minus one, minus two, but it doesn't work here. Uh, that is, this is enough. Do you cover the grapes for the winter? Grapes should be covered, yes. They must untie and lower them. Dasha will cover them with fir branches. The grapes sh should be pruned very much. I regretted them last year, Sasha said about this, but it is not difficult to care about. Let's say growing grapes, Irina will say for sure, there are few worries. You planted it, you have a berry every year. But with tomatoes, there are chores from the beginning of January, February, you should care of them. And tomatoes are only a short period of time. With apples also, there is a fruitful and lean year, and there are almost every year a good harvest of grapes. Yes, that is some kind of perennial crops are very important. And grapes are a perennial crop, very comfortably, it fits you constantly. Just like these apple trees, even with regard to apple trees, here we all grow wilds. Here many people think, why do I need this wild? I'd rather plant cultural ones. We, for example, are very pleased with these wilds. They just provide our goats. Yes, white goats. Some of them are so tasty that some, yes, are very tasty in themselves. And that ones, uh, which are hard or sore, Goats eat them well, that is, everything fits in. Well, if you are already firmly determined to be cultural, well, then it's your choice. And so, of course, we are very happy that everything is wild. How many of them do we have? More than a dozen, a few dozens, even several dozens, two dozens for sure. And all the apples, everything is beneficial. Well, you just planted them yourself or seeds or what? No, they are mostly themselves. There used to be a road here. People walked through the site into the forest. And here peer grow, peers grow and plums and blackberries and so on. Well, you are lucky. Cool. 
Let's change the look. We have a couple of wild trees growing too, but only a couple. Fruit trees, they are scattered everywhere. Well, as it were, it is planned that the main part is here. Apple trees, pears. There are practically no drains here. There are plums everywhere. And there is the apple pear part here. Well, you have palm and stone fruit? Yes, and it turns out that that's very cool. It was planted a lot here at the wedding. Anatoly planted probably an apple tree somewhere here. The plantings grow hardly at first, if they are not planted correctly. Now I will tell you about the experience of proper tree planting. If the trees grow slow for a long time, do not be discouraged. For example, about two years ago, they finally started to grow rapidly, to give apples. They just froze, it seems that not even a centimeter was moving, and later they started once and for all. That is, it gradually, gradually. The main thing is to believe in them, take care. But nevertheless, any tree has its own term. It ripens and will grow anyway. And we have such a positive experience that it is still better to plant trees in a raised form. It is an elevated planting. That is, for example, we pour a pile of earth right on the ground. It is one of one or two wheelbarrows level in the center and plant apple, pear, trees, no matter what. We plant a tree on such a rise and sprinkle the roots to the neck. Only we get a shape like this. That is, the main ground is lower and the neck is high. And what is this plus? At the very beginning the tree grows very well, right in the first years. When we plant at ground level, the grass penetrates very quickly and begins to inhibit the growth of the tree. When we plant, it is better even to put cardboard on the ground to draw out the grass. If you do this correctly, it will overgrow with weeds for three, four years. During this time, this is the most important thing for a tree. Its roots gain strength. And only then, after three, four years, it doesn't matter uh, are there any weeds. Do you look after it? or don't look, it will already go. And so we have well-planted trees already producing apples for two, three years. And here at the very beginning we planted it like this, at ground level. And only in the tenth year we got the first apples. The same experience as ours, we call it on the hill. Uh, we don't have black soil, it is important to say here, we have just a tortured field, just worn out, a lot of Dolomite or what is there, uh, there is loam, the fertile layer uh, there is literally 12 cm, well, maybe 15. By the way, now you live in an estate, it is improving, improving. Even where we do nothing, it is already 15 cm and more. Be patient. Even if you come to a site that is not uh, fertile at all, you will still gradually improve it. Where our main garden is, it is more kind and well groomed. Now I started mulching the paths, now I will raise the clay, make such a clay crater and raise the beds themselves. There will be an experimental zone like this. Of course it's autumn, not such colors, there are few flowers. Well, anyway, today is such good weather. Where did you run away? I don't have time to remove you. It's okay. This is what this pond looks like, this forest is high, now behold almost noon after the autumnal equinox already, and here the pond is actually in the shade. This is actually normal. I like this place, everything is fine. 
I do not see a problem with that, for example, close to the forest, even from the south. Maybe there is some problem in the future that a lot of foliage falls there. All the same, there is already a decent sludge. Well, yes, I don't know. We'll get no again in 50 years. It will be clear what had to be done and how. So it turns out those heaps, they are just zoning us from the forest. And about digging the pond itself, the main thing here is to look so as not to dig to sand layer. If you are digging in clay, digging and suddenly get to a sandy quicksand, it's best to bury it right away, as we think a deep pond is not needed at all. The depth of the pond decreases, and if you take a very deep pond, then the earth will begin to sink. Well, either the size should be different. Here I have a slightly different experience. I would make a bigger pond now. But of course the bank should be gentle there. Holson talks about this all the time. He says that incline should be two units of length to one unit of height. It's a good bias that stands steady. According to our experience, this is right. Well, we did not do that. This can be taken into account as a minus. We also made steep banks, wrong angle. We have a meter here, one and a half already the ground has fallen. That is, part of the land is already in our pond. It's the same story with us. I can also recommend to plant various weeping willows, which look very good by the pond. You can plant apple trees, we have these apples, the apple trees bearing fruit. You can experiment in different ways. The only point is that it is more important to make the right slope, not to dig to the sand, so that the water does not go out later, and properly zoning the heaps of land that are from the pond, so that later you don't have to manually distribute or dry the equipment. It is better to make the layout at start. Dasha, will you turn here? And here you can see the heap of fertile land. Here we cut it off little by little and it should be all here. Well, this will be enough for a long time. That is when the fertile layer was put here in advance. We have a vegetable garden, of course far away from here, but for some landscape needs we can the topsoil from here, flower beds and so on. And the way you arrange the topsoil. Did not you want to do some kind of terracing, for example? Or, oh, for example, a flat top and something else to plant there in this ridge. Do you want to plant anything there? Concerning the plants, I would like to, yes, but here we turned out to have like the local Alps. We have alpine goats grazing here, very comfortably. But in general, since the border of the plot is near, it is more convenient for us to have the high ridge, to not be seen. Well, if, uh, of course, God's grace here it's convenient, then that's one question. And so you can still plant some shrubs uh, and it will be even less visible. Yes, in the long term, of course, something needs to be done with this hill to plant a hedge on the other side. I just haven't got there yet. Clear. But there are thoughts, yes, in this direction. Yes, yes, and this protruding heap, it actually takes place. It must be formed somehow, so that it would be better to walk along the, form, along the forest. And on the other side, with appendix, it also violates the space. It too should be removed to the forest there. Well, in general, there is something to do at your leisure. Well, let us now continue to talk about important issues. Interspaces between estates and about the road. Come on. Now we are on the interspace, and here you can see that there is a kind of canal going to the pond to collect water. It's also a very interesting idea, in the part where the site is quite wet, you can collect the spring floods and took them out into the pond. And now about the border. We are on the southwest side, side of, of the site. Just in 15 meaning there will be a direct course of the sun. This is the only 
interval about half an hour where it is sunny here. The rest of the time, as we see, the trees of our and the neighbor's side make up a shadow on this pathway. And on the border all the same, I want some shrubs, flowers, and it is better to take into account our negative experience so that to grow a normal hedge. It's very narrow here, about two meters with a little in this place, and there may be a little more in another place. But if you go further, you have a border with a neighbor, you have already planted something there, do you understand? It is already difficult to change it. The width reaches one and a half meters. Such borders are very narrow, and large trees standing side by side. It just grows very hard. I planted something there. It is poor suffering. It pl I planted it five years ago. That is, in order to make an impassable and beautiful hedge, you still need light. And for this, it is desirable that the interspaces should be large. Now we will move to another boundary. For comparison, it is two meters wide on average, perhaps a lawn even 70 meters. On the other border, there are five and half, six and a half meters wide. And uh, what a striking difference. The bushes there have been starting to smell already. They feel good, comfortable, and all plants have enough sunlight. It is less than half an hour during which the sun shines this jet. And that interspace is shined already for three hours. That is, the sun appeared, for example, at 10 o'clock, lit up on our friends. Uh, here it goes for three hours, even when our site will grow very big. The neighbor's site will be eliminated for some time and partially get on ours. It is the more jab, the better. Well, it seems to me it's uh, not only about the width, but also about the layering of plants. This, this is an important point that you mentioned already. Well, we came to the same conclusion, and in my opinion, many faced this issue that when you plant on the border, plant small bushes first, further uh, either large shrubs or medium trees, such as uh, mountain ash or something else, and only then large trees, maybe even plant 10 meters deep, do not plant any closer, it might be better that way. Well, if you plant something as important as an oak tree or the or other big trees, then you definitely don't need them by the edge, because they will interfere. It will be a pity to remove them later. Well, if you can imagine the oak, while the oak trees are like that, and if you imagine normal oak, a Christmas tree and birches have grown by themselves by self-seeding. Well, here's it's simple, it's simply not possible to grow some kind of hedge. The first row, a bush, it just doesn't grow. Literally, in the coming years, my task is to thin it out precisely, or even to remove it, because two years ago I planted a hawthorn, and I had already started to summarize, and I already understand that there should not be large trees at the very edge. And now, in many settlements, boundaries of 2-3 meters have already been laid. In these conditions, in order to have sufficient sunlight, you have to set aside your trees. Only then you will get a normal hedge. I have one more comment. My neighbor is Sasha Miloshenko, uh, and I remember he told how he communicated with experienced foresters, and they asked him, where are you grown to plant your trees? He says, in the underbush. In which? In birches. He says, you can even plant it in a spruce underbush. There will be more sense. Birch, our beautiful Russian tree, is a very aggressive tree. As it were, such as pioneer, it takes away the strength from everything that is around. And here, if you look, there are large birches. They not only give a shadow, and if you look there from below, I think everything is just in their roots, and they take everything away from everything. Many of our settlers have now also come to the conclusion that they thin out birches very much. And me too, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Well, 
In general, this is our joint experience. If big trees grow where the bushes should be, the bushes will be just stunted, sparse. You will not get there something plump, beautiful. Even if you plant a beautiful hydrangea there, it will grow, but not so good. The lila could be gorgeous under the sun, but it will stand in shadow like two tall blades stretched. I have the same experience. Let's take a quick look at the road now and at the good border, the one that is ideal. Here, pay attention. The trees are slightly set aside large. And then immediately the bush begins to feel better. And now the trees appear here again. Here, by the way, you see this. What's the name? Acacia. They were planted at the wedding, but it already subdued. It lost this battle. Bad luck. Hawthorne, of course, bypassed it here. You must either form a fence yourself, or, uh, well, in general, in order to make it beautifully and somehow competently, you need to apply such knowledge. Yes, but, uh, by the way, I like the fence along the road. Again, there must be enough sun. It is often planted, but in principle it creates just such a wall, because many have a hedge, Northwest, can you imagine? Well, yes, but just a point, all the same, there is enough space seems to be there. I understand that this is not a suit, but it looks good. We have now come to the north-west side of the area. Here we have a driveway, and you can see that here we started. Nothing has been planted yet. Here we have a normal hedge. It is easy to start on the free area, and if heavily overgrown with trees, you still need to free area for the hedge. That there would be enough light uh, and the plants would grow normally. But about the road, I want to say, in settlements in general, especially in some, the road is a big problem. Thank God we dumped everything centrally, more or less comp competently make the cuvets. From the cuvets, uh, everything moves to the middle of the road. There is sand, gravel. In general, this is all good. And so I would like to tell my experience about the maintenance of this road. I actually do it here on my own, purely on their own, without pits to keep it in good quality. Although there drive off a little to the side, pits appear, but only by the, by the small but early efforts, early efforts every spring, but more precisely this this spring I will even missed because everything is normal with the road. And before that I have lived here for three, four years, and so the road is being destroyed. What did I do to keep it in good condition? First, every spring I spent some money, I brought in a bunch of rubble. Literally there is not much, that is I spread uh, ten wheelbarrows of rubble. It's enough. 
At the beginning, do not leave the problem. Do not let such ditches uh, form on the road. Anything, well, not earth, of course, but sand, some kind of sandy loam with stones, with gravel, so we need to support it. If you missed it, then even truck won't pass there. And uh, ev very important, I did the landscape design of my way. I also had this second part, but this side, which we cut, it turns out uh, it was either equal or slightly higher, and it turns out such a bowl of, for water. And the road is uh, uh, as if in water. And the first thing I did was the line, the cuvette, and so that the water runs off. And I constantly mow. At first glance, it seems only like a beauty what you mow. But first of all, the settlement must be beautiful, I think. Once a year, in the fall, even when everything is dry, you should at least mow. This is good for spring, because spring is a fire hazard time. Someone will pass a visitor throw a cigarette, and you never know how it will finish. Plus, the garbage gets stuck there and is not visible. And so, if it is mowed, then passing people do not want to litter. It seems there is only beauty. In fact, when you constantly mow, this place from side road, ditch, so let's call it, uh, where it is mowed, the road is already beginning to dry, and this is the best thing to keep it. If we leave this mirror with a ditch, then it will quickly, quickly turn into a tank of road. In terms of dryness, I would even join this thought. It is even more important if there are large trees along the road. Here in the summer we have a piece of a large forest in the middle uh, of, the, uh, of our settlement and there it gives a shadow on the road. There, uh, when there is practically no snow anywhere and uh, there is still ice and it is wet there for a very long time, there in general the road is not good. This again to the question that large trees would not be planted close to the water. It must be cut through so that the road dries quickly after rains. At least a little bit to look after your roads. It is understandable if you make contributions for the road. You should get some help. But you still need to look after it yourself. If this is not done, it will be simply crushed and will require a lot of funds to rebuild. In principle, this is the most basic thing I wanted to say. Well, and the fact that the territory should be beautiful. So, we just came to the borderline, that I would make such borderlines in every settlement between the sides. From ditch to ditch, there are at least five and a half, maximum six and a half meters. I hope you can see. The sun, even when it is high enough, of course, birches and large trees do not need to be planted close. The edge of the site is still a zone of bushes, shrubs, fruit trees. The second row, of course, not even the first. And only the third, fourth row is already trees and tree like shrubs. And with such a distance, what's good about it? First, passageway can be organized. Maybe the entrance to the estate could be somewhere there, for example. Here you, you can put a goat, it will graze perfectly. It seems like a border, we rarely put goats here, but here I am making hay. Over the summer I prepare hay for goats for a month in winter. That is, these are the boundaries, they can partially simplify your tasks. They can give food to animals and most importantly they give light. If you go further there, all bushes feel great there. 
Well, even from here you can see that it is more cheerful than uh, from the other side. Yes, a very big difference. If you have not created a settlement yet, don't have a plan, make big borders. Don't make it small, if it possible. How many settlements do we have? 90 sites. Well, about 90 sites. Here I counted. If we plan such borders everywhere, we would miss only two sites. Two or two and a half. We would have such wide borders, well, as I counted, five meters. That is minus two sides, but what are the advantages in order to plant something? This is such a valuable moment. And from the disadvantages of our conditions, well, you already understood that a narrow boundary is critical. So I have to clean up my trees to make here some light. About the boundary, that is all I want to say. Do you have any questions? No, no, all clear. I have seen all I need here. There is a forest here. I want to invite you to walk along the forest path. Let's go. I have such a path along the entire perimeter, so that it would be convenient for me to walk with a stroller. It is not a birch alley, there is a lot of trees. The birch alley continues for a very short distance, because there is a pine forest, some rare places through the garden. There is an opportunity to make a road along the perimeter of the site at the beginning. How do we use it? We pass very often. It allows you to enjoy the nature. In fact, even living on an estate, you are often stayed home. You are within four walls, you work, you do something. So if you make a habit of regular walks, then a path that runs not along the border of the side, but as you want, will appear itself. For example, I have many revelations, many thoughts, pleasures, even some berries, <laughs> for example, I would not notice over the summer. But thanks to such works, I communicate with nature a lot. I walk along these paths and try to make them so that when my wife is waiting for a baby, when he is born, he will be able to move here in a pram. And this path continues uh, four, five hundred meters around the estate. Somewhere across the groove, somewhere across the bridge, and this, in my opinion, is the basis of life on the estate. Why would I like to notice this? Because there are a lot of plants, ideas, you realize them work, there is still a little bit of commotion. But the main difference between our settlement life from other is that we have a place where is this four zone, where you can walk around your domain. A hector is quite a serious area. There is a place for creativity. While you walk, you think how you will make the boundary, how you will decorate it, what trees you will plant, where you will fix anything. And all my revelations, all my best memories are connected with these works. 
Uh, maybe that's okay. Well, that's okay. You just said about it, but it seems to me not detailed enough. I just understand why such a path is needed. It is needed in order to pay a lot of attention to any corners of the side. Because we also noticed in our state that this is where we live, where we work, everything grows better there than there where we never work. And if you have such a path that goes through the most part of the side, then all your state will be warmed up by your attention. And this is very important. And this path can really be multifunctional, that is, working with a child, for example, I am engaged in Scandinavian working to idiot and overweight. It is a half of a kilometer. When I work several times, I already several kilometers, it's great. First, I will do the internal circle and then also the external. If I have strength and desire and about of inspiration and about thoughts, well, yes, where except the, in the nature to get them, naturally. Where except their native nature to get them. This is so cool. To be honest, we don't have similar path yet. We have some roots on the side that we sometimes walk, but Marina, my spouse, has been thinking for a long time. We haven't found out the best variant yet, what route to make so that it would be circle. Here, you know, I started from a short one. Actually, I started from this birch alley. I decided to plant a birch alley for my wife and then let it go like this. And here it will wrap it up like that, to start from the short one, clear, and then this will loop itself. We have a living pine bench there, some places for privacy rest. Here by the side the family trees grow with. The important places appear around this path itself. Indeed, you keep working cursing with you glance, and it helps you to remember something, because some places I, I look, oh, it's already overgrown. And if I had not passed here, I would not have remembered, so everything would have died out there. It makes you observe everything. It was from here when I crossed the boundaries of my side. That is, I began to think in the format of a settlement. Now the children, the situation requires intervention, participation in public affairs and projects. Children were born, and you understand that in a few years they have to go to school, they need to get some knowledge, they need to communicate. That is, this nursery period will end, and they will go into the world, and I was like, what is it in the world around? So we don't have some basic things, and you begin to participate in this, as your strength, capabilities, understanding allow you. I think about it for a long time, and it's works that allow me to think about it to dive on the thoughts. Well, yes, and in general, in order to go there, you need at least some rough plan to understand what the settlement needs. Well, I would like to say something briefly about our settlement. Briefly, because this is just my opinion, everyone can have a little bit of their own. Our settlement needs some public association. It's serious. So, if we need something in the settlement, a subotnik, a swing, some basic things, it is good that we have a family on duty, but there is not enough feeling of society. A serious person who has a strategy, a vector of development, responsiveness on a competitive basis. Someone take responsibility for a landscape of public territory. Someone for a school or take a participation in an inter-settlement school project. We have a kind land project. All these parts need to be merged into one and there is a clear picture. And finally we started to move, not like a goose step, but faster, forward. This infrastructure would begin to advance here. 
Some new opportunities would appear. Tourism would start. <coughs> and the ecotourism will be possible only if we make an agreement to each other. If we discuss everything and we will understand where we will meet people, how we will organize it at all, you can do this, of course, with one family, with one estate, but to make it considerable and first to... All of this is only through the prism of social arrangement. In addition, in the books of Vladimir Nikolaevich, in the five, fifth book, he says we need to create a settlement now. Who wants? And so he received the first suggestions to create a public association, a public organization. It says so, and on its basis create a charter or some rules, planning that all to develop and move forward. In our ca case, what happened? We came with this principle, got our hectares and settled on them, and stuck in every day, every day life. Oh, how beautiful everything is. There was school, we began to plant, but we missed its moment when the energy, energy dispersed. But it was necessary to hold it and still communicate more, more tolerance for some different opinions. But joint projects had to be invested from the beginning and not let go. Well, if you let me, I will comment too. May you, you can cut it out later. <laughs> Your efforts are very close to me, but I may have some singular opinion about it. That the, the communication is needed, and that we do not have it enough, I absolutely agree. Although, on the other hand, in comparison with the countryside of modern Russia, I believe that we have public affairs here in just smoke with a beam are developing rapidly. We have a lot of holidays here, uh, these social centers, various events, and in this sense it is great, but it's clear that we want even more. But in fact, and this is my vision, I also analyzed how, how did it happen, and it seems to me that we are going by the completely natural way. It seems on the one hand that it is slow, and on the other hand I come to the conclusion that uh, it's quite normal, according to our training. What's the matter? In the beginning we all read the books, but we understood the ideas described, very many ideas are diametrically opposite. It is amazing how you can understand the same letters, the same words, in completely different ways. But it is so. And this is our first generation of the creators of family estates, in my opinion. It is engaged in these separates of these grains from the chaff. And this is a very important task for us. Because, in the beginning, there were many illusions. That is, here you are talking about how the roads had to be done. But I remember in the uh, 2000s, uh, when I was on the forum, Anastasia.ru, people seriously discussed whether roads were needed at all. It would be better not to do them. Therefore, the car is parked at the entrance to the settlement and then by horse, bike or on foot. And there were many such ideas. There were also such moments I just did not know how to react to them. We need to decide what to do, how to organize the community side. He says, why are you talking about the community side? We need to think about how to populate the planets nearby. Well, there are many such questions. In my opinion, we have an evolution of our opinion and uh, they are becoming more simple, down to earth. And to be honest, this makes me very happy that we are somewhere closer to the earth in this sense. Because you must first stand on your feet here, on earth, before you populate other planets. This is my opinion. And there, there are many discussions. I thought about it too. I had such a thought. Maybe even someone will not like it, but it seems to me 
if you imagine what kind of active discussions we had at the beginning of the creation of settlements, how much something was discussed, if you imagine that these are our active discussions, if millions of people really began to build family estates, and these active discussions multiply from several thousands, how many of us uh, are throughout the country to several times more, to millions of people, it would turn into some kind of battle. That is our task now to determine what it really should look like. Here is a simple question. Electricity. Is it necessary? Is it not necessary? There are still a lot of opinions on this matter. There are ardent opponents of central electricity. There are supporters. What is correct? Can we use cars or not? Other benefits of civilization. This is how I formulated it to myself. I was just trying to follow of the logic. After reading Migret's books, it sounds like this. Many perceived Anastasia's lifestyle, as described in books, as an ideal. And since it is an ideal, one must try for it. And you should achieve it as quickly as possible. Well, how can we get there? Well, give up the benefits of civilization as quickly as possible. And it seems to me that this is not meant by the books. If to refer to them, well, these people who offer this, they miss such a moment from books, the truth is in the unity of opposites, and our task, yes, you are right, we are the first generation, our task is to figure out whether we still need electricity or not, how are we going to negotiate. Uh, yes, and these discussions, we must find answers to them. These are our kind of reconnaissance detachment of how many thousands of people there are all over the country, and we will find the answers, but it will take some more time. And during this time, just the first family states will turn into such beautiful pictures that no one will need even who comes to read any books. That is, a person came, looked, then looked at his concrete box in the city, then he looked again and thought, what about me? How? However, it is just obviously. And that one and the half hectares is not one and the, he and the half hectares of potatoes, but one and the half hectares of beauty. In short, I'm talking about the fact that it makes some sense that we have it happening gradually. And on the, on, on the one hand, it seems that it, it is slow, but on the other hand, it is logical, and it should be so. And even faster, we don't need to rush. Everything, apparently, is foreseen. By the way, I am already so well a lyrical, a lyrical digression. I was just reviewing old recordings of Vladimir Nikolaevich's speeches, Mm, there the 99th year was saved somewhere on YouTube, the year uh, 2002, and in one video I noticed he says what Anastasia said about the way, by the way, I did not see it in the books, it was he who verbally said that Anastasia said, the first wave will consist of 9,000 people. I can be confused, maybe 9,000 family states. This is the first wave, and later development will go on further. But based on Vladimir Nikolaevich's speech, I realized that he saw the first wave as very quick, and immediately after it would be more waves. But in fact, apparently this was not meant. Apparently it was implied that the first wave rolled out, and it must pass. That is, it may require, well, tens of years before we understand all this, before we get it all settled, and it's clear what it's like, because it seems to me a good family state has a certain period of maturity. When you imagine there, you plant it, I don't know, I have a linden alley. When it blooms, it will be an abrupt development. The bees with buckets will carry this honey. This is a completely different situation compared to when it is not yet blooming. And I think that there will be, in my opinion, the maturity of the estate will be in 20-30 years. It is clear that then you will have a lot of apples, 
Wait, another 15 years? Well, how? Well, when you linden trees are blooming. Orchard apples can be obtained much earlier. It is clear that in 20-30 years, if you did everything right, we will have uh, nowhere to put these apples. We will have so many of them that it will be possible to take them out in wagons. In principle, experience is accumulated in order to achieve all this faster. Yes, but nevertheless, uh, as you know, nine women will not give birth to a child in one month, and you will have a century-old oak only in 100 years. There are no other options. That's what I am talking about. This is still conditional, 20-30 years. In fact, age all trees, the same seed that could grow for 550 years, well, in 30 years you will have the only 30 years old. But that, in this sense, maturity, a mature family estate, maybe it should be 300 years old. But that's a completely different story. Sorry, I've been talking too long. You are already tired, in my opinion. Dear spectators, I hope I hope you were interested. Something of our experience will be useful. No wonder Anatoly and I spent two and a half hours around our state. We examined everything, tried to remember something that is important, which might be helpful for someone. Write comments. What would you be interested to know? You write about it. Yes. What topics? Yes, because we are still training, and as I keep telling Sasha. That is, we, it turns out, and the had the first video with me, I told it myself, I interviewed myself, and the second here with Sasha, who is taking pictures, organizes the shooting, edits, my love is shooting today, by the way, to shoot his video, uh, yes, we had to engage Dasha, she helps us a lot, thank you so much. It's, by the way, two and a half hours to shoot us, it's very difficult, thank you very much. So, this is our second video. We plan to continue this work. Maybe part for next year. I hope that this year we will have one more video, maybe to shoot Sasha's parents. They also have a very beautiful estate. In short, we will move in this direction. Yes, they are great. Yes, yes, they are great fellows. They are doing a great job here for all our settlements. They have a very good vegetable garden, a garden. It is very important for us. Well, what else to say? All? <laughs> Thanks for watching. Yes, thank you, Sasha, for the excursion. Prosperity to your estate. Come on a visit if you pass by. Definitely. I think, of course, it would be very interesting for my wife to see. Well, thank God we live nearby, we'll call you and meet. Oh, good luck. We are saying goodbye. Well, my friends, today we looked at the family state of Sasha and Dasha Hanin. They are 12 years of experience in developing their site, starting in 2008, when they had a wedding. And by the way, it, it was especially interesting to me, because my wife and I were at their wedding in 2008. We planted several seedlings. That time it was essentially a bare patch, with a few trees at the edge of the plot. Now it is a beautiful forest garden. I really liked it. I saw a couple of points for myself in this video. This is about large greenhouses, which work much more efficiently for us than small ones. And the second point is about clay, its use, accelerating the growth of trees and shrubs. To be honest, for me, this is generally completely unex unexpected information, that clay can thus promote plant growth. I somehow have not dis noticed this, and I will probably also experiment and try. Please tell us in the comments what you liked, what we might have missed, how our video could be improved. Thank you very much. Until next time.